evening, you are about to see the seventh battle of the network stars. Yes, once again, the network stars have come together to do battle on the fields of Pepperdine University in California. In the next two hours, we'll see them clash in the seven athletic events that have provided the action through the six previous confrontations. In addition, we'll watch our guest co-host, Billy Crystal, as he recently paid a special tribute to Muhammad Ali. And we'll meet some of the stars, both in and out of character, up close and personal. We'll meet them as professional actors and as private individuals. The network are tied at two victories each in this three-year series of contests. And so, as we approach the seventh competitive meeting of these primetime actors, let's pause a moment to quickly gaze back at the incredible panoply of stars and action that has paraded throughout the battles that have already been fought. Do you remember the first moment in the fall of 1976 when Karen Grassley, Adrian Barbeau, and Linda Carter dove off the starting blocks and the battle of the network stars was underway? Remember ABC's captain and king of the kayaks, Gabe Kaplan? And the surprise athlete in the second battle, Christy McNichol. Can you forget last spring the frustration of Richard Hatch, struggling to the finish line with a broken paddle? Spring of 77, Hal Linden confronted by Dan Haggerty. The baseball dunk competition is a contest between the repartee of the victim and the accuracy of the thrower. Remember last May, Bob Urich bathed beautiful Catherine Bach three times. But the most treacherous event has been in all six battles. In a sense, it's five events in one, the obstacle course. It's danger best remembered by Michelle Phillips, who ended up in a cast, but not before she went on to win the final after injuring herself at the wall. The obstacle course has proven to be tough. Billy Crystal remembers, too. Eyes were on Jacqueline Smith not only for her exceptional beauty. In the running relay, she exploded on the track and passed her competitors with speed that astounded the gathered fans. Do you remember Parker Stevenson wrenching his ankle in the home stretch? Disregarding the pain, he pushed forward, keeping his lead over James MacArthur. To look back at the thrilling moments of the football competition is to remember the elation of Penny Marshall. Delicate possessiveness of Cheryl Teagues. The deft hands of musician Tony Tennille. Richard Hatch displays talent that is worthy of the NFL. Leaping with abandon, he makes what appeared to be an impossible catch. And the success of Billy Crystal, making four completions last spring to qualify ABC for the tug of war. Ah, yes, the tug of war, with a torturous tradition that no one looks forward to. Remember Telly Savalas in the beginning, Robert Hedges, Hal Linden, and Gabe Kaplan. The strain of Penny Marshall. But most of all, the Hulk in the sixth battle, almost single-handedly pulling ABC into the trench. Now, as we await the first event of the upcoming battle, here's the man who's never missed this event, on hand once again, America's leading sports journalist and the host of the Battle of the Network Stars, Mr. Howard Cosell. Thank you very much, Fred Foy. We're at a familiar scene set, the Olympic-sized swimming pool at Pepperdine University, high above Malibu Beach and the Pacific Ocean, getting ready for the first event in the competition, the swimming relay. The captains meet, Ed Asner, Bob Conrad, Dick Van Patten, friendship on the surface. But behind that friendship, the backdrop, a week of practice by the CBS and NBC teams of stars. Because this, truly a grueling competition, and while everybody has fun and girding for the battle when it begins, it becomes truly the battle of the network stars. Hollywood is a synonym for the stars, part of the myriad complex that is the greater Los Angeles area. 20 miles away, there is another part of that complex, and there it is before you, the lovely, even glorious campus of Pepperdine University, set high above Malibu Beach and the Pacific. 
Pacific Ocean and down below, 24 top stars of primetime television from shows on all three networks have gathered to defend the honor of those networks in the confrontation known as the Battle of the Network Stars. They are down there now by the Olympic-sized swimming pool. The first event coming up, the swimming relay. Let's go down and meet them, all of them, one by one. The swimming relay, five to a team, three men, two women on each team. Let's identify them as they appear. Starting off for ABC in lane number one from the long-running series, Eight is Enough, Willie Ames. You're in love with Howard <laughs> Thank you, my boy. And swimming the second leg of 25 yards for ABC, who plays Buddy from Family, the two-time Emmy Award winner, growing up so beautifully, Christy McNichol. Swimming third for ABC, the woman who plays Morgan Wainwright, the helicopter pilot in 240, Robert Joanna Cassidy. Is uh, George Cosell here this morning? <laughs> the name is Howard Cosell. Howard, my dear. Oh, Howard, Howard Cosell, right on. from Barney Miller, Max Gale. Well, how do you do? <laughs> I do fine, thank you, Max. And taking the final 50-odd leg for ABC plays Bradley Benson and Angie, Robert Hayes. Shaving a haircut too big. Whoa! And the shampoo. They really do a darn. The first non-swimmer playing Corinne from Soap, Diana Canova. You're irresistible, my love, even without your makeup. And from the associates, the nation's top fashion model and now actress, Shelley Smith. Ready to go. Shelly, you're a winner. And finally, returning as captain of the ABC team, the father of the award-winning series, Eight is Enough, Dick Van Patten. Leading off is CBS, Mary Ellen on the Waltons, Judy Norton Taylor, a great athlete, by the way. Next, in lane two, the financial editor for the award-winning series, Lou Grant, Al Williams. <laughs> Swimming third for CBS, DJ Johnny Fever, WKRP Cincinnati, Howard Hessman. These are my emergency medical supplies. <laughs> Funny guy. These are my lungs. Swimming fourth for CBS, star of Big Seamus, Little Seamus, Catherine Lee Scott. Good morning. <laughs> Swimming fifth, perhaps CBS's finest athlete, Dr. Gonzo Gates from Trapper John, MD, Greg Harris. I got vitamin D. I'm going to be so healthy. We're going to win. And now the non-swimming stars from CBS. I'm Jan Smithers from uh, WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> and Valerie Bertinelli from One Day at a Time. Finally, the captain of the CBS team, the star of Lou Grant, Edward Asner. You need a reprint just tell me. Now the NBC captain, a man called Sloan, Robert Conrad, says this will be his last battle show. The coach is never supposed to have to play. I know. You know, we just go and say, go kill them, kids. They can't hurt us. Now I know how it feels. <laughs> he never quits. Second off the blocks from real people, Sarah Purcell. Effervescent, isn't she? Thank you. <laughs> I'm ready. Third for the NBC team, Colonel Wilma Deering from Buck Rogers in the 25th century, Erin Gray. The fourth leg, co-star of Shirley Patrick Wayne. You know when you got Conrad for a captain? Yeah. You don't worry about ABC. You better win. Because <laughs> if you goof, man, you got to go in the ring with Conrad. Oh, so it. The NBC anchorman, Buck Rogers, Gil Gerard. Not swimming on the NBC team. Officer Bonnie Clark from Chips, Randy Oaks. That motorcycle just go right over. There's no way to hold it. From NBC's Little House on the Prairie, she's grown up playing Laura, Melissa Gilbert. He's BJ from BJ and the Bear, Greg Evigan. Good morning. 
Have to have a commissioner for this competition. Here he is, guest commissioner, George Brett of the Kansas City Royals. And finally, to handle the official scoring, we welcome from Buck Rogers in the 25th century, Tweaky. I believe we're being pursued. Dead lead, sucker. occasion I have the pleasure of introducing to you my newest colleague to serve as co-host a member of the jockocracy what else a faded relic of the past a used up athlete three times in this competition a failure every time thus nothing left to do with them but make them a sports commentator I bring you ladies and gentlemen Billy Crystal oh, thank you Howard <laughs> I should retire now. I think perhaps you should begin a whole new career, the way most do. Well, I've studied with Merlin Olson, and I think I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's fun. I wonder if you'd explain to the folks what competing in this competition has meant to you in the past. Well, a lot of people think that it's just you come out and you, you just have a good time, which is true, but there's a lot of tension. Everyone's nervous. You want to do your best. Uh, the events are something you may not do every day in working out. It's tough. And I was watching everyone uh, getting ready. My God, I feel like Gifford here. And they really... <laughs> <laughs> they really, you know, you really, I get more nervous for this than I did for, for an, a performance, you know. It's very tough. And this year it's different because we have four women to each team. In the past we had three. So we have four women. I think that's going to make a big difference in a competition. I think you may be exactly right, Billy. Spotting those women is the key to the whole competition. We've learned that. That's true. And you have Willie Ames, who's a real good swimmer. I was watching him in practice. And he'll be swimming against Judy Taylor and Robert Conrad. And I think with uh, Ames and Chris McNichol back to back, it could get them off to a quick start. There is Bobby Conrad, NBC, lane number three. And there is Judy Norton Taylor, CBS, lane number two. And in lane number one, Willie Ames. Now, we're almost ready to go. Remember, the first four swimmers on each team swim 25 yards. The fifth swimmer on each team has to swim two laps or 50 yards. The whistle gets set. Ready for the start. Now, let's see if what Billy Crystal suggested holds up. And they're off. Good racing dive and start by Willie Ames. ABC, the outside lane. Robert Conrad second. Already Judy Norton Taylor out of it. Ames building up the lead over Conrad. Quickly. For ABC, Christy McNichol. She's a superb athlete. Look at her stroke. She's building up the lead even further against Sarah Purcell of NBC. CBS is all but dead already. See how important that start was. Now, Joanna Cassidy for ABC. Powerful young woman. Good stroke as we close in on her. And she is leading Erin Gray of NBC on the lane to your right. CBS still completely out of it. Max Gale of Barney Miller is already in the water. And ABC clearly in front. Gale going mainly against Pat Wayne, trying to close distance but not doing so, so successfully. And forget about CBS. They are dead. Robert Hayes in the water. The final two laps. Robert Hayes starting slowly, picking up speed. But wait a minute. Coming into your picture. Gil Gerard of Buck Rogers closing in on Hayes. Good racing turn by Hayes. Hayes grimly trying to cling to the lead. Gerard closing distance. Gerard trying to move in on Hayes. But now Hayes is the one who's holding together. ABC has won it with Bob Hayes. Gil Gerard and NBC second. CBS did last. So ABC, a quick 100 points. NBC 75 and CBS 50. And this, the starting event of the Battle of the Network Stars. Quickly, let's get over. Where is Bob Hayes of Angie? He is right my here. congratulations to you, my friend, as the anchor right, man. <laughs> Willie, good work as the starting man. There's the camera, gentlemen. Max Gale held together. Christy, you were great. All of you deserve. But you had the anchor leg or the two laps. And right. Gil Gerard was closing in on you. Were you aware of it? No, had no idea. But these guys are so good, they just set it up as a piece of cake for me. <laughs> I wasn't you a believe piece that. Of... I got some land in Florida. I'd like to tell you, Howard. All right, let's go to Billy Crystal. He's with the losers. Ed Asner, I believe. Billy, what do you think the key to the race was? The key. 
uh, these uh, starting blocks. No. We've had trouble with them from the beginning. What was the trouble with them? Well, they, 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 they the, the, ours was sabotaged. Ours, Can we get so a shot of that? Our swimmers would get up on them. They'd wobble and weave and completely unhinge and unbalance the swimmers. Well, I don't see any problem with it looking at it now, and I don't see what you're talking about there. See, oh, now I see. Now I see. But they don't float either. No, and that's difficult to dive off of. Yeah. Asna's nonsense aside, Willie Ames really was the key to this race as you look at him in replay, the way Billy Crystal predicted. Here's Billy with Willie Ames. Willie, you were the key to the victory, I think. You got ABC off to a great start. You and Christy. Uh... I don't know. All I can think up is get uh, Conrad's blood pressure going. Were you intimidated <laughs> by him? I saw so Judy you hit the water early. I mean, not, at not at all. Do you swim a lot? Uh, yeah, I was on a surf team for a while, and I do a lot of scuba diving, so I, uh, <laughs> I was kind of brought up at the ocean. For the official score, let's go to our computer Tweaky and his drone, Dr. Theopolis. <laughs> How about an audition for Monday Night Football, Howard? Well, Mr. Van Patten's ABC team is in first place with 100 points. Mr. Conrad's NBC team is second with 75 points. And CBS, captained by Mr. Asner, is in third with 50 points. That's the way the cookie crumbles, Ed. We're ready for event number two in the Battle of Network Stars, and it is the kayak race. This is a tough and at the same time appealing event because you have to go the length, and then you've got to go around these buoys, and that's very tough. And then all the way back, and finally there is the exchange. There are four on each team, two men and two women. And there, the leadoff lady for CBS, Kathy Lee Scott. You see the other members of her team. Erin Gray for NBC. You see the other members of her team. And finally, Dick Van Patten of ABC, the team captain. You see the other members of his team. We're about ready for the start, Billy Crystal. Well, Dick had trouble last year, Howard, in the kayak race, so this should be interesting to see who gets off to a good start. Aaron Gray looked real good in practice, and so did Kathy Lee Scott. So, uh, again, getting off to a quick start is a big key. Aaron Gray with a lithe body. Her problem will be to stay within the lane because as we watched her in practice, there was a tendency to get out of it. Kathy Lee Scott knew at this, and just a little bit nervous, it looks like, from here. And, of course, Dick Van Patten, already spoken of by Billy Crystal. And there they go. They're off. Look, there goes Erin Gray. Yep. She could get into trouble right there, but no, she straightens her kayak out. And Kathy Lee Scott got off to a pretty good start and is stroking pretty. But look at Erin Gray. The body slightly bent forward. Live, short strokes. Doesn't plunge that stick in too deeply. Nice rhythm. It's smooth. It's controlled. And now she's coming up to the buoy. But look at Van Patten. He is in trouble. Yeah. The buoy. We call it the buoy cune. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the best interest of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Van Patten. What he was doing was not in the best interest of the pool. He had gotten backwards and now he had to go around that buoy in a way he shouldn't have. Aaron Gray way out in front as you can see and stroking very very smoothly. Kathy Lee Scott with a slight lead over Van Patten. The man should have gotten the edge in this but no way. Aaron Gray much too good. Aaron Gray coming in for the exchange. Now Billy. the exchange is the key. Look at Conrad. See Bob's coaching him. He's sensational. He's got her going out and uh, Melissa going right in. They should get a smooth takeoff. That saves a lot of time right there. Exactly and Melissa Gilbert, you will soon see, has a great stroke. Howard Hessman in the boat now for CBS. Howard had trouble finding the kayak there for a little while. <laughs> and ABC in trouble, but now ahead of CBS and trying to close the gap, and it's a big one on Melissa Gilbert. That'll take some doing. But Robert Hayes is in the kayak for ABC, and maybe he can make up some ground on Melissa. Well, he's going to have to because coming up for NBC, they're two heavies. they got Pat Wayne and Greg Evigan. <laughs> when you look at Hessman... Now look. he's having trouble finding the buoy. <laughs> well, Hayes had his own problem there, getting around the buoy, and Melissa built that lead up all over again. Now Hayes with 
shot, but clean as strokes is gaining some on Melissa. But she's going to bring her kayak in with NBC still in the lead. You saw Conrad hanging over, setting up the exchange. He is a superb captain in this event. Pat Wayne gets into the kayak. Look at the time he's taking. He's cool and confident. Look at the strokes. The, the man was born in a kayak. I, <laughs> I mean, he knows from this kind of thing. In the he's meantime, insane. Joanna Cassidy, Billy went in for ABC, and it was an uneasy exchange, and ABC lost a little more ground. Can't conceive of any way that Joanna can make up ground on Pat Wayne. Well, she's leaning, leaning so far over in the boat, it's, she seems to be losing a little balance there. See, it's wobbling a great deal. Yeah, but still, she's coming up there because Wayne's having trouble negotiating the turn. Now, if Joanna goes. can do it, no, she's going to have a little trouble here, too. In fact, she hits the buoy yeah, well, so in she... the best interest of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a helicopter pilot now. She seems to be hovering in one spot of the pool. <laughs> she it's, is it's her far brain. too much forward, though. Yeah, and her arms are too far apart, though. Look at Pat's grinning now. A little cocky, but he deserves He's doing a great... Look at that. Oh, it's a beautiful stroke he's got. He's going to bring the kayak in. Conrad supervising the exchange. Greg Evigan, a great athlete, coming in for the, for the anchor turn. Look at all the time. They had to go back and touch. That was good thinking on Pat. They could have had some penalty good points Good thinking there. on Captain Conrad. The intense Joanna Cassidy finally coming in. They have to haul her in. And an exchange here. Christy McNichol gets in. She is a superb athlete. We have mentioned that. We did it during the swimming relay. And look at her go. Those quick, choppy strokes. Not plunged into the water too deeply. But look where she stands. No chance at all against Evigan. Well, you never know. I remember last year, Richard Hatch for ABC was way out in front and the oars broke and he <laughs> just barely won by the, the nose of the kayak. So you never know what can happen. Well, as race. you said then, devious doings. Devane with a beard. <laughs> I still think Conrad chewed through those oars. I still <laughs> think so. But Greg Evigan is off by himself. And NBC is going to win in the kayak race this year. 100 points for the victory. They have 175 points total. Coming in second, Christy McNichol, ABC. They've got 175 points. And CBS dead last with a total of 100 points thus far. Quickly, let's move on over for the interviews, Billy. <laughs> Great effort, Bobbin. Congratulations. You're now tied with ABC after two events. Uh -huh. You think the little Melissa held together beautifully? I'll bet you Melissa had the best time, and Aaron was tough. The, the men did what they were supposed to do, keep it straight. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm excited as I can be, and all I did was coach. <laughs> I learned after swimming I'm a good coach. Listen, <laughs> in, in the warm-ups, I saw you working a long time with Erin. Yes. It proved out. Yeah, that's because she's pretty. It had nothing to do with her stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you keep using him again as your anchor man every year. Well, that's because he's young and he wants my job. Now he knows I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> now let's check in with our computer, the official scorer, Tweaky and Dr. Theopolis. Tweaky, the rowing competition has brought Mr. Conrad's NBC team to a first place tie with Mr. Van Patten's ABC team. They each have 175 points. Unfortunately, Mr. Asner's CBS compatriots are still last with 100. Kid, you've got a big problem. Are you upset by the presence of a former adversary as co-host? No, I'm only upset because he punched me in the, the nose when I was doing that uh, <laughs> that soap we did together for um, Break, the pun intended. Breaking up is hard, hard to, to do. do. Yes. Give uh, me your version of that fight. Uh, it wasn't. A, it was a two-punch fight. Uh, it was Crystal two Conrad no. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to see that scene. Took one minute in the recently seen TV film, Breaking Up is Hard to Do, but eight hours to make this scene. Let's look. You! No! Hey, Frank, take a look at this, huh? You see this? You think that's because you're a drunk, Frank? You use people, Frank, and you hurt them. Well, I don't want it anymore, Frank, here, and I don't need to anymore, Frank. Right. I need to, Frank. I'm standing dirty, clean, I'm easy. I don't need it. Enough. It's enough. Oh, God. Uh, if you just stay here. Didn't you want to get up and slug him? <laughs> nah, I think he's one of the nicest men I've ever worked with, fine actor, but I will slug him at a later date. <laughs> to be announced soon. <laughs> 
Keep your guard up, Billy. He keeps claiming it happened in the movie. It happened during lunch, Howard, and they just happen to be rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, the baseball dunk. Our helicopter view of the baseball dunk thing. An event that's a lot of fun. And, of course, each member of the winning team gets 20,000. Second place team, 15,000. Third place, 10,000. Let's meet our commissioner. You're looking at one of baseball's greatest hitters. His name is George Brett. He's the third baseman of the Kansas City Royals. But as a third baseman, he's not that great a thrower. As you will see right now, as he missed the target for the baseball dunk. And he missed it two times in a row in the fourth time in a row. George Brett is the... Perfectly executed the dunk. George Brett is one of the greatest hitters in baseball, no question about it. Remember those three consecutive home runs against Catfish Hunter in the American League Championship Series in October of 78? That's the George Brett people have come to respect as a hitter as much as anyone in the game. Here he is again. George, would you be good enough to state the rules of the baseball dunk? Yes, Howard. First of all, the object is obviously to hit the bullseye, and if you hit the bullseye, the person will fall in the water. Each player is awarded three throws, and they must stay behind this white line. If the person hits the bullseye and the person falls in the water, they're awarded three points. However, some girls might not be able to hit the bullseye hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame them. You're against equal rights. <laughs> and if that happens, the, the person might not fall in the water, they're awarded one point. Now, if they hit the arm, sometimes it'll trigger the alarm, which will make the person fall in the water. Nothing will be counted on that, and they just get another throw. Aaron Gray, beautiful Aaron Gray, has been picked by Al Williams of CBS as his talk. A little tentative, Billy. <laughs> I would be. It's scary sitting up there. You should know. Yeah, I sat up there last year. It's here. As Al Williams getting ready to throw. He's got a good arm, Bill. Yeah, he's real accurate. Why are you lousy at this? for another turn a good sport a lot of badinage during this event there always has been. it's got a carnival flavor you can't do an odd chicken look he's choking up i can tell already let him choke yeah you're choking i know it already see what you so Al Williams hit for two out of three, and he gets six points for his CBS team. Aaron Gray, a star, a beautiful star, who's making a marriage work. You've had a successful marriage, wouldn't you say? I would say, yes. I'm a little surprised at it myself. <laughs> two kids. No, one, one boy, Kevin. He's about three and a half. We've been married about, it'll be 11 years this year. I was a high school sweetheart. Got married when I was 18. He was right out of Vietnam. It was one of those things. He came home, and five days later, we were married. And yet, he was behind your moving out to the coast. Yes, absolutely, 100%, uh, which uh, surprised me again. He's full of surprises. I guess that's why I'm still married to him, because it's still interesting. Uh, it was one of those situations where he knew I was miserable, and one morning said, cut it out. I can't stand it. What's the matter with you? And I said, well, I can't continue doing something that I don't believe in and I'm not happy doing. And he said, well, what is it do you really want to do? And I said, you know, I want to act. And he said, well, what does that mean to you? And I said, well, it means going to Los Angeles and pounding the pavement there and starting all over with a career. And he said, well, he says, I'm, I'm not happy with you the way you are now, so go and we'll work it out as it comes. And if it happens, we'll deal with the problems as they, you know, approach us. It's most unusual for a man to do that. Yes, I think so. He's a very unusual person. We worked hard at it, uh, discussing what we felt about things and uh, dealing with each upset as they came and not letting anything go for too long. Hit it right on the head as soon as you see something happening. As soon as you see the other person upset, hurt, or whatever, you say, what's wrong? Give it to me. Let's deal with it. Let's get through it. 
you look back at that English leather commercial, are you sorry you did it in any way? Oh, no. I had a lot of fun. I was two months pregnant and feeling terribly sexy <laughs> and very safe. So I gave it my all. No, I enjoyed it. That was a fun shooting. It really was. Will you do it for me? Sure. <clears throat> all my men wore English leather, or they were nothing at all. Tough act to follow. But Randy Oaks will follow it with one of her men, not by her choice. The man throwing at her is Greg Harrison, maybe the best all-around athlete in the competition. <laughs> Didn't take long, Billy. He's a good athlete. He, he's, he does everything well. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, she's used to good athletes. <laughs> we first met in New York when you were dating Joe Namath. How long did you date him? Howard Cosell. <laughs> I can't believe you. Um, I've been out with him for years. You still see him? Occasionally, I say hello to him. We're really good friends. I'm engaged to be married to someone else. I understand. So, it, so it's not a really good idea to be dating around, you know? Um, I saw Joe the other day. He's working on a movie. He looks wonderful. And uh, he seems to be very happy. I must say, Randy, you seem to be very happy, too, starring as you do in Chips. You've got an awareness of who you are. On television, it's like you get this instant fame. It's, it's amazing, you know? And you really can't take it too seriously. <laughs> but, Mr. Crystal, she just may have to take Greg Harrison seriously. Look. <laughs> He's tough. A little bit of the makeup can roll off the eyes under these the eyes circumstances. Three out of three for Greg Harrison as he rolls up. A grand total for CBS of 18 points thus far in the baseball dunk. And it's a chagrin to Randy Oaks, who was helped from the pool by the man who belabored her. We'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thriller for Dick ABC. Van Patten about to participate in the baseball dunk for ABC. CBS has a record 27 points. Okay, Dick. A lot of pressure. I can't be partisan, but you have yeah, to get I, a lot of points here. I don't think that, that ABC and NBC combined are going to be 27 points. You That's never fantastic. know. Well, let's get it started. Who we'll are you going to pick? Uh, <laughs> you have good taste. I will say he has good taste. Are you kidding? Look at the pants he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> And Smithers, WKRP, Cincinnati. She was 16, a surfer girl at Malibu Beach. A photographer from Newsweek discovered her. She's doing a story on what teenagers in America really like. She ended up on the cover, March 21, 1966. As Van Patten looks at her, the rest became history. Ken, I love you, Ken! I love you, too, No! Van Patten is not impressed by a young woman's physical appeal. Dick's an actor, Howard. He's got great concentration. And it's real tough with someone who's as pretty as Jan. That's the cover of Newsweek. That's the story we were telling you about. How it all began for her. And she's come a long way from the day of that cover. This is a very serious girl in point of fact. Concerned about a career, concerned about where she's going, and she knows she's not just another pretty dame in Hollywood. She knows she's wet, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Van Patten scored six points for ABC. Here's Bob Hayes. Hey, Ed, are, are you kind of hot today? <laughs> <laughs> Ed, why didn't you get in? <laughs> why Ed Asker? Why this great distinguished act? 
Because he's got a great set of legs. What the heck? <laughs> Good luck to you. That nice show. tan, though. Looks Plenty like the bottom of a whitefish hat. <laughs> we work all day. That's why we're not tan. The man is a great sport. Though. He sure hey, he's is. He's not a bad throw. Hey, sucker. Yeah, but Ed's a great competitor. Let's see if you can freak hey, him out a little. Brother, where's Galoshes to dance? <laughs> Well, three points for ABC. Ed Asner, once a tackle in football. Not that bad in his earlier years, many years ago. Ed, you should never have said that about my mother. <laughs> in the meantime, let's watch Hayes. Remember, Van Patten well, scored six for ABC. <laughs> Everybody thought it was your mother. In reality, it was your father. <laughs> He's got him a little spook father tower, like I think. Father like son. See? That's the whole idea of this, is to get that throw a little uneasy at the line. Oh, when we get to the subject of your sister. We blow it. Oh. ABC with a total of nine points. Finally, when it didn't count, he dunked Asner again. It'll take three people to lift him out of the tank. <laughs> they felt that in Encino, Howard. <laughs> extra shots, extra letters. So... Ed Asner, Lou Grant, will get out of the tank. And it may indeed take three people to lift him out of it. But how much grace, character, and dignity he is showing in this participation, in this competition. And as he does, in fact, get up and get out of the tank and return to reality for a very brief few moments, you have to think about this man. You have to think about the richness of his talent. Oh, it's you! Get away from me! Get away from me! No, let me have Come on. Smith. Get away from me! You have to think about his sportsmanship. Can you get it? And you have to think about the diversification of roles through all the years. The Mary Tyler Moore show. Now the Lou Grant show, among others. And how he spoke in a brilliant scene with Lee Chambers on the Grant show to a teacher who had been ravaged and was afraid to come back. Jenny, it makes me crazy that you're gonna quit. I swear to God, it makes me sick. Because you're good, and you've got to know that. So good that no one can replace you. Because if you're not there to tell these kids how important they are, to guide them, and to cajole them, to, to kid them, to motivate them, to, to, to make them reach for more, then damn it, there won't be anyone else there to tell it to them ever. That would be a damn shame. I thought you weren't any good at making speeches. Perhaps the greatest success in the history of television was Roots, of which you were a part. That may indeed, in the long run, be what you'll remember most about your years in television, quite apart from Mary Tyler Moore. I, I will remember it in the fact that the two reasons I did it was because I thought, well, maybe they would have a hard time getting the actors they wanted to be in it. And I, I wanted to be identified with talking about that subject. And uh, uh, the role provided a variation. I never in a million years believed that it would outsell rich man, poor man. I never expected it. And to tell you the truth, I don't think your network did either. I admire you personally very much. I mean that, and I'm not disposed to be flattering to people, as you know. I admire you because in a business that is dominated by fear, you're not afraid. You're not afraid of issues. You're not afraid to take a stand publicly. And it's not the norm in our business. Did you ever worry about rubbing somebody raw, costing yourself your career? Only, only with issues uh, that I supported outside. Uh, I thought twice a couple of times about causes I supported, but then I thought, uh, with all the good fortune I've enjoyed, uh, I would, how unbelievably cowardly it would be of me if I, if I stopped now. So uh, that's the only time, and if everything came to a halt now, it wouldn't matter because I've had a, I've had a run for my money. And he's given this country a run for its money. A man who can do most everything on stage, 
and a man who's willing to have fun here. The baseball dunk continues, and Diana Canover is throwing to try to dunk Howard Hessman of WKRP Cincinnati. That's a third throw. ABC way behind CBS in the event. Having missed, she decides to have a little fun and dunks Johnny Fever, the DJ. This is a multi-talented young woman in the light of her mother, Judy. Stars in soap, and that prompted this question. What do you feel was your best effort thus far? Oh, gosh. I'd have to say the progression of uh, Corinne Tate on soap, because she's come a long way from being a nymphomaniac to uh, an almost normal person. It's something like you, Howard. <laughs> and I happen to know, Diana, that you're dating an old friend, Steve Landisberg, Bonnie Miller, and he was on this show, utterly inept at football. I think you can do better. I could do better, possibly. My mother doesn't think so. She keeps reminding me. <laughs> so does his mother. <laughs> You gonna marry him? Yeah, I might get around to it. You don't believe in marriage as necessarily the fruition of a romance. Oh, sure I do. Sure I do. Most definitely. I believe in the family institution, which is quickly waning in our country. <laughs> so Gil Gerard will be throwing at Joanna Cassidy and NBC tr struggling to get ahead of ABC both we behind CBS in the baseball dunk no chance to catch up or so it seems Gil Gerard, Buck Rogers, Joanna Cassidy, Morgan Wainwright, helicopter pilot, 240 Robert. Tune in tomorrow, folks. <laughs> Terrific woman. Where? She's such a great competitor. She's really in the spirit of things here. Having a, she's just been having a great time. <laughs> no score there. You saw what happened on the throw. Hit the no arm. Points. It did not hit the no target. No points, but you know, hey, how you're clean anyway. <laughs> Personable guy, you know that, Billy? Everyone, it's been, uh, this has been the most enjoyable one I've been a part of so far. Because you couldn't make a fool of yourself competing. <laughs> Keep talking to you. <laughs> Boy, that's distracting. There, he finally connected for the three-point score as Joanna went into the tank. He gave me inspiration. That's illegal in some states, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Conrad viewing the whole thing so seriously. And seriously is the right word when it comes to Joanna Cassidy being lifted out of the tank right there by Gil Gerard. Here she is playing her role in 240 Robin. 240 Robert Air, Mayday, Mayday. Fire on board. I can't see. There's too much smoke. Sam, give me a hand. I can't see. Pull up. You're losing altitude. Pull up, Morgan. Pull up airspeed. Control sluggish. It possibly could be the solenoid. 
on the word serious, Joanna Cassidy, a serious-minded actress with a serious view of life and with good reason, two children. I asked her if she wanted the children to go into show business. I don't mind if they do. Let me put it that way. I, Knowing how tough it is, uh, uh, I know what my daughter particularly would have to go through, but I don't mind. What would she have to go through? Why the daughter particularly? I think it's rougher on women than it is on on men, although it's it's tough for both men and women. But uh, women are a little bit more vulnerable, are up against uh, more difficult situations as far as being compromised. Um, show business is not easy, as is any kind of profession like this, music or anything. Uh, but then again, my having been through what I've been through to get here has been very good for me. Um, what have you been through? Hell. <laughs> no. Uh, it's just been a rough period. There's been no security to it, really. Um, uh, I've had to struggle. I haven't always had money to pay the rent. Uh, uh, I've had two children to take care of, besides myself. And uh, I think that during the time, you have to settle for a little bit less than you would sometime in the beginning, you know, initially. You have your, your, your ideas of how you'd like to perform. I think of myself as a heavy, dramatic actress, and I've, I've had to do some pretty silly stuff. You know, I, I did a show one time where I just was outrageous. They put funny glasses on me and a wig on me, and I got stuffed into a washing machine. Mm -hmm. Just really demeaning things. You felt debased. Yeah, yeah, but I, I did it, and I came through it, and I got paid for it, and I realized that that was just one of the things that I would have to get go through to get to where I want to be, and I'm getting there. I'm, I'm on the stairs, you know. I, I'm up towards the top now, and it's okay. You have to love that lady, don't you? But if you're Willie Ames, you're not going to love Greg Evigan, who dunks him into the tank. And with that toss, Evigan and NBC take over second place in the baseball dunk event. ABC third, CBS has clearly already clinched it with a record 27 points. Randy Oates and Bad Lane kind of enjoy things. Evigan's last throw, just for fun, really, a miss. Still another throw, just for fun, and he produced the desired result as he walked off. So, it's time, perhaps, as we look at a happy Captain Conrad, to meet our good friend, Tweaky, and get a reading on the official scoring in the competition. Howard, would Frank do this? They told me this would be a spaceship. Well, surprise. NBC has moved into first place with ABC holding on to second. But CBS, with that record showing in the baseball dunk, is now a very competitive third. Congratulations, Mr. Pasner. I'm here with Fred Silverman. Uh, Fred is in a uh, little disguise today. Fred, let me ask you this. Oh, wait, yeah. quick. He's going to a reprogramming meeting. Let me ask you this. What is Gary Coleman really like? Okay, well, that's a scoop here. And the scoop here is that coming up, one of the testing challenges of the battle, the obstacle course event. So challenging. Best combined time of male and female. The qualifying heats leads to the finals. Best combined time there wins the finals. To tell you what can happen in this thoroughly testing event, here is Billy Crystal. Okay, here we are at the obstacle course, which is probably the most difficult event because it combines speed, endurance, and pure rhythm. See, it's a lot of agility. I had probably the most memorable run at this course two years ago, remember? Okay, the key is to get a good start. Please remember, don't leave your upper lip on the top rope. Watch where you step in the tires. I learned that from running in Central Park. Grab all the handlebars, then get a good jump at that wall. Up and over, don't leave any of your knee on the top of that fence. Coming off there. And if you're hot, hit the water, just like I did. Tumble around and make sure you finish. And then search for your upper teeth. 
Billy Crystal, a remarkable demonstration of how not to run the obstacle course. The women's heats are already underway. Judy Norton Taylor of CBS with a great time, 19.92. Here's Billy Crystal again. Well, yes. you've run this before. Yes. And you've won it. Yes. But now Judy's time of 19.9, it makes a, a lot more pressure on you, doesn't it? Yeah, but I think with the adrenaline going in the competition, I might go a little faster. Well, good luck. Thanks, I'll need it. And you're running against a veteran over here. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm going to walk over to that veteran if I don't trip. Yeah. Christy, you are a veteran. You can't deny it. You're a veteran at no, such I'm a young old. age. I'm getting old. I'm older now. You think that's going to make a difference little. in the race? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to try hard. You hold the course record. Do I really? How many seconds? Well, how many seconds? I don't know. <laughs> she had 19.9. 19 19 that's fast. Do you think that you're, uh, you're, uh, now your now your new size is going to make a difference? Maybe you say a you're growing up. Older. You think that's going to make a difference? Just a little bit. Not much. But I'm not as fast as I used to be. I know that. Well, let's But I'm going to try to be young again. Nine. No? <laughs> you got to beat it. Good luck. Thank you. Not just a great athlete, but a great actress. There she is, accepting her second Emmy just recently. Ladies and gentlemen, and now, in a different scene course, set, a different motif. NBC it's Melissa Gilbert Fuller. going against Christy McNichol. Two of the young ones getting ready for the second qualifying heat, the obstacle course. Remember, Judy Norton Dell already with a 19.92 second time. A big time to have to beat. But Christy McNichol, already the record holder in this event for women. And they're ready to take off. If they run it like Billy Crystal, they'll both wind up in the tank. Here we go. Waiting for the starting gun. Both girls poised the gun off. Christy McNichol getting up a quick early lead. Working the lifesavers, as you call the tires very well. On the handlebars, Christy McNichol with a possible penalty, but Melissa Gilbert in real trouble. So Christy McNichol off by herself. Handles the water hole easily. Christy McNichol with a quick and easy victory over Melissa Gilbert. Look at the determination on her face. Why don't you handle a slow-mo, Bill? Okay, well, I thought that was a penalty on Christie. You have to grasp the last rung, but obviously it wasn't, so she's going to have a great time. Here's poor Melissa struggling. She had a blister on her hand before the competition. She's having a rough time. A great race for Christy. Let's go to Howard for the official time. Here it is, a brand new record. Nineteen point five six the official time, but an injured Melissa Gilbert walks off. This young woman who's grown up on Little House on the Prairie is very important to the society. Near Palm Springs is Children's Village USA, a children's residence center dedicated to abused and neglected children and their families. What's important is the time and efforts Melissa Gilbert volunteers with the children. Here she is. Okay, now let's make a big, long nose. Uh, now, now he looks like an... When we first came here, um, the little ones hardly had any idea of who I was. All, all they, that I was was Melissa. One little girl said to me, you're beautiful because you're a long-headed woman. I said, what? She meant my hair because it's long. And another one, they all, they're, they're so loving. They all say, I love you. And the one says, you give much love, little girl with the curly hair. She says, you give much love. I love it here. Hey, look out. I want to live here. You ready? <laughs> don't fall. Oh, please don't fall. I like little kids, and I like working with them. And they're just little babies, some of them. Some of them are older, but uh, they're basically just like all other kids. If I were to give them some advice, I'd tell them to be happy and enjoy what's going on around them rather than seeing all the bad and everything. Because people who grow up saying, oh, this was terrible, that was terrible, this is bad, that's bad, we'll never have any memories, and we'll always lead a very depressed life. Whereas a little kid who grows up saying, oh, wasn't that fun, and wasn't this fun, and remember the time when, we'll always grow up being a happy person.
A tender thing, a tender feeling. Not all of the children abused. Some daycare center kids. And Melissa, so great at them. Now we're ready as we go back to the competition, to the third women's qualifying heat in the obstacle course event. Valerie Bertinelli, one day at a time against Erin Gray, Buck Rogers, 25th century, and they are off. Nearest to us, Erin Gray and Valerie Bertinelli in the fall lane. They negotiate the tires, like lifesavers, we said, now the monkey bars. Erin Gray with that live, supple body, getting a quick lead. Now over the fence, but Bertinelli, a veteran in this event. She knows what it's all about, the water hole. Erin Gray still in the lead. Bertinelli pouring it on, getting the lead at the finish and winning the qualifying heat. What a finish. What a great race, Valerie. You should, you should each congrats. What a finish. She did come from behind she to sure nose you out. I heard you tell Billy Crystal you were kind of psyched out going I really into... was, yeah. Right now, I'm just about to faint, but don't mind me. <laughs> Second time around. That's what you did last year when you were hurt. Oh, but you gave it a terrific, Aaron. Oh, terrific effort, you. really. First oh, time you've ever faced that. Yes, very first. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you were great over that leap. Yeah. I couldn't believe you made up that time. No, oh. <laughs> and she won it at the very end, at yeah. the water jump, and then the final burst that brought her past you. It was yeah. terrific, really. It was a lot of fun. Proud really? of you I'm both. I'm glad it was you and not Christy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should both be congratulated by the team captains. Who called it? <laughs> Who's calling what? Looks like there's a penalty on Valerie. It's a shame. It's one thing to run a lousy race and lose like I did, but to run a good race and be disqualified is a shame. Witnesses on the side have said that they saw that they saw the same thing in each case. One pulls up. Okay, okay, it's a call. Captain Asno, what is the problem? You were watching a penalty. Inefficient, inefficient judging. What? In what way? Well, Christy slipped on the last bar just as just as uh, as Valerie did on this bar. Valerie was caught. The ABC is mouthing off. All right, in slow motion, Valerie Bertinelli, the far lane. Let's look at it. And as she gets to the final rung on the monkey bar, just touched it, did not grab it. Quite apparently, a good call, a penalty. Howard, here's Christie's now, and we're at a different angle. Now watch her as she comes to that last bar. She does grab it, so it's not a penalty. Christie, I'm sorry. Commissioner Brett, what do you say? Well, the commissioner, I, after hearing rumors that Christie McNichol did not touch the last bar, I went over and talked to the judge. She said she did grasp it. I was standing there when uh, the, when Edward's partner came over the last one. Uh, I saw her just slap at it. She didn't grasp it, and in the rules, you say you have to grasp it. The one judge said that Christy grasped it, and this one, she said she didn't grasp it. Poor Valerie. But net, net, the finals, Judy Norton Taylor against Christy McNichol. The obstacle course finals coming up. Men's division. It will be... Greg Harrison of CBS against Willie Ames of ABC. But first, the women, Judy Norton Taylor against Christy McNichol. Here's Billy. You set a record in that lane, and now you've chosen to run in this lane. Any particular reason? No. No. I've never seen you more determined for anything in my life. This is well, what I love sports. <laughs> so, maybe well, good that's luck. Why. I'll get Thank out of you. your way. Okay. I'm going to go over to Ms. Taylor, who ran a great race. Judy? Yeah. Yes. I thought we would. You're running against the record holder. I'm... You ran a great time yourself, and uh, it's going to be a great race. How do you feel? I'm twice as scared as I was the first time. Did you think that the competition would be this strong, that, that the sense of competition for you would be this intense? I knew Christy was good, and I knew she was going to be the one to beat on this event. She's done it before. She's quick. She's young. She's small. She's got everything going for her, and she doesn't make mistakes. So it's, it's going to be really tough. Well, you didn't make many either. Good luck. It's going to be a great race. Thank you. Judy Norton Taylor, been with the Waltons from the very beginning. Let's meet this remarkable young woman. 
a great athlete, a gifted actress, up close and personal. I don't tend to, I don't, I'm not into the Hollywood scene whereby, you know, it's like the Friday night Hollywood parties type things. I'm not that type of a, I'm not that into that side of the business that much. Well, she is some athlete. Look at her working out with the Los Angeles Thunderbirds, the roller derby, the way she uses the elbows. She is going to be some tough cookie for Christy McNichol to beat in the finals of the obstacle course. And now we're ready for the start of the race. Judy Norton Taylor right before you, the far side, Christy McNichol. They're off. Christy McNichol with a quick early lead, navigating the tires perfectly. Judy Norton Taylor falling behind. Now the monkey bars. Did Christy clutch that last rung? Our view obscured by Ed Asda. But Christy McNichol off by herself. Christy McNichol again with an apparently quick and easy victory. Christy, you did it again. And yeah. You're done in, uh, aren't you, kid, eh? I don't know. Great race. No Thank pain you. this time. You didn't hit me. No, no pain, no pain. Where is Judy Norton Taylor? Let's get her over here. She deserves congratulations, too. Where is she? Oh, is she all right? Is she all right, Captain Asner? Is she all right? That was a tremendous effort. It wasn't until that last fence that you fell behind. She's Congra good. <laughs> Congratulations She's good. to you. Thank she is you. good. It's amazing. I'm oh. waiting on the official time. Wait a minute. A penalty. A penalty let lodged against Christy McNichol. Now let's get those official times again. The penalty lodged against Christy McNichol, so she winds up at 22.20. And Judy Norton Taylor at 20.41. So CBS is presently leading in this event with Willie Ames yet to go against Greg Harrison. Let's get the official nature of the penalty from Commissioner George Brett. George, what happened to bring about the penalty? Well, and Christy McNichols went over the monkey bars, Howard. She did not grasp the last bar. She just kind of slapped at it and didn't put her hand around it. And when you do that, you're awarded three seconds penalty. No wonder Ed Asner has become such a great sportsman. That is very competitive, and you've got to have competitors out here to have a lot of fun. Okay. Thank you, George. So there it is, at the moment, leading in the event, CBS, because of the penalty against Christy McNichol. And so we're ready for the start of the men's finals. That's Willie Ames of ABC. And he's got a lot of time to make up in view of the penalty against Christy McNichol. And of course, going against Willie Ames, Greg Harrison of CBS, who has been a superb all-around athlete in this competition from its very inception. Ready now for the start. They're off. And look at Willie Ames go under there and develop the early lead. He maneuvers through the tires very well. Now the monkey boss, Greg Harrison, now ahead of him, over the wall. And tremendous trouble for Willie Ames. It'll be an easy victory for Greg Harrison. Off by himself, CBS the winner. Well, really good effort, but this guy is spectacular. And so, you should give him congratulations, Valerie. Greg Harrison with a brilliant performance, winning the obstacle course event for CBS, net-net. Willie, Bob, do you know what the score is now in the whole of the competition? NBC with 300 points. ABC with 300 points. And with a great comeback, CBS with 300 points. So we have a three-way tie. You couldn't ask for a greater competition up to this point. And next coming up, the running relay. And what an event that's been in the past. The running relay, six to a team, three girls, three men. One, two, four, and five legs of 110 yards, and runners three and six legs of 220 yards. We're about ready for the start of the running relay in the battle of the network stars, and what a competition it is up to now, a three-way tie. Leading off, legs one, for NBC, Aaron Gray, for ABC, Dick Van Patten, and Ed Asner for CBS. 
and there they go. And Dick Van Patten is overtaking Ed Astor in the outside lane with ease. Aaron Gray trying to hold together but falling behind. Van Patten will pass off to Christy McNichol, giving her a good lead. And the others are Randy Oaks for NBC. And Jan Smith is for CBS, but it's all Christy McNichol. The lead builds up. She passes off to Willie Ames, and ABC is piling up a lead. Willie Ames is going against Judy Norton Taylor and Greg Evigan. There is Willie Ames, and you can see that lead stretch out. Greg Evigan behind him, trying to close the gap. Willie Ames off by himself, but suddenly, Willie Ames either relaxes or he has run himself out. As a fighter punches himself out, and Evigan closed down to some degree. Now, it's Shelly Smith for ABC, Sarah Purcell for NBC, and Kathy Lee Scott for CBS. And look at Sarah Purcell go. She is closing down the gap on Shelly Smith, and she has run herself a tremendous lap. And here's the matchup edge. Pat Wayne against Joanna Cassidy. Joanna desperately trying to hang on, but Pat Wayne passing her easily. And so Pat Wayne becomes the key factor because of what Purcell did for NBC. And now in the final lap, it's Max Gale of ABC right there trying to pass Gil Gerard of NBC. But Gerard holds on. CBS is third, and what an event this has been through all of the previous confrontations. As Max Gale congratulating Gil Gerard. Well, let the joy be unconfined. You made up for the travesty of the obstacle here. And great anchor leg, and it wasn't easy because Max Gale was hanging in there. I could hear him breathing down my back <laughs> the whole way. You are smoking. Let me tell you something, baby. Come here, Sarah. You may have been the key to that race, making up the distance after really? Willie Ames is like. Really? And you've got to admit, I told you you were the key. Didn't oh, I? thank you, Howard. You were just oh. great. Oh. Bobby, your strategy was perfect yes, as team sir. captain. I want yes, to congratulate sir. you. I have no idea why Dick yeah. Van Patten and Ed Asner were running. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What are they doing out there? Big fan of Van Patten. He gave ABC a big... The key was, again, the women. Sarah right. Purcell. The women. The women. How about Sarah? How about up that ground. Hey, it was fantastic. No, it was he a beautifully, it was a beautifully one run race, you know. That was a beautiful thing. He did run the last That's hundred. right. I'm only good oh. for a hundred. <laughs> Pat, you finally became a winner. Thank you, Harvey. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> I'm here with Max Gale, who ran a great final lap in the 220. But Max, you ran in socks. How yeah. come? I figured I needed every advantage I could. You mean the light of the load? The, the light of the good? load. I'm carrying a few extra uh, resources around that I didn't used to have, you know? When was the last time you ran in 220? I guess when I was about 18. Would you do it again soon? The 220? Yeah. I'd like to do it again right now. <laughs> well, let's do it again right now. The replay. And watch Max Gale, who Billy Crystal just spoke with, running in stocking feet. Right there, he tried to make his move to pass Gil Gerard. It, it appeared on the outside that for just a brief ascension, he might do it. But Gerard was the one who held together. And it was Gale who tired ever so slightly. And as they came down the stretch, it was Gil Gerard pulling away with the victory. A tremendous effort as NBC moved ahead in the competition. And now here's our friend Tweaky. NBC, 400 points. Mr. Van Patten at ABC, 
375 points, and again, Mr. Asner and CBS very close with 350 points. The football competition will determine who competes in the tug of war. The battle of the network stars is fun, fun, and more fun. But also, under the leadership of Gino Gieselman, the trainer of the Kansas City Royals, it is a lot of exercise, it is a lot of pain, it is a lot of bandaging. There's a man who obviously enjoys his work. And the participants have benefited from his ministrations. They're ready for the battle in three-on-three -three football. Six people to each team. Three on each team must be women. And five points for a touchdown. Two points for a completed pass short of a touchdown. Those are the basics, the nuts and bolts. Let's look at the highlights of the action in the first contest between NBC and CBS. From the very beginning, it was touch and go. Gil Gerard operating as quarterback for NBC. This was play number five. Remember, each team had six plays. And Conrad all alone capturing the pass from Gerard. Five points for NBC. Gil Gerard, who ran such a stunning anchor leg in the running relay, scintillating again. And here he is again. This time to Greg Evigan. Ten points for NBC. But now it became CBS's turn on offense. And the quarterback for CBS will be Al Williams. He of the Lou Grant Show, the close colleague of Ed Astor. And so Williams brings into action. This was play number three. The pass to Judy Norton Taylor. Touchdown. She had eluded her defensive secondary. And so it was 10 points to five for NBC. Play number five. And again, the pass. Williams to that same fellow Harrison, who's been such a thorn in the side of the other two networks all day. Now an overtime. Gil Gerard for NBC. To Bobby Conrad, who is again loose in the end zone. NBC gets the lead. CBS has a chance to answer back. Cocky little Bantam, isn't he? Now, Al Williams throwing for CBS. Short in the first place, dropped in the second place. NBC goes into the tug of war. They have won. Now let's join in progress. The battle between ABC and CBS. It'll be a showdown. And we join the competition in progress. The winner will go against NBC to determine the ultimate winner of the battle of the network stars in the tug of war. Bob Hayes of Angie is the quarterback. Joanna Cassidy, Christy McNichol, the wide receiver. And Billy Hayes in his fifth play. They haven't scored yet. Look at that. It's Christy McNichol. So ABC does come up with five points. They take at least a temporary lead. And 
Let's look at this now. Christy McNick looking at it again. She gets past the defensive secondary. She's all alone, a perfect peg from Bob Hayes. But clearly, this team misses its great quarterback of the past competition. The man who set a record for a passing quarterback in the Battle of the Network Stars. The man who is my colleague and co-host today. None other than Billy Crystal. So, we watch for the final play for ABC as we look at Bob Hayes again. And this time, another errant throw. So, a forlorn Mr. Hayes has scored only five points. I mentioned Billy Crystal and how they miss him. Now I want to tell you more about Billy Crystal. I would like to go back in time and let you meet Billy Crystal for the great and versatile talent that he is. It was Ladies some weeks back in the Los Angeles Mr. forum. Billy they had gathered to Crystal. say farewell to Ali. Billy Crystal said farewell Thank in you. his own way. Here he is now, only 18 years of age. Cassius, do you plan to turn professional? Yes, I do, Mr. Cosell. See, nobody's ever seen nothing like me. So fast, so pretty. I'm so fast, I can play ping pong by myself. Sonny Liston is not coming out incredibly young. Cassius Clay, just as he predicted to this reporter four short years ago, has knocked out the man he called the Big Ugly Bear and become the new heavyweight champion of the world. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. I am Muhammad Ali. I will never be known as Cassius Clay again. Cassius Clay is a slave's name. I'm now a disciple, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm now a black Muslim minister. I am now Muhammad Ali. Today, June 20th, 1967, Ali today was convicted of draft evasion, fined $10,000, sentenced to five years in prison. There will be an appeal. For three and a half years, I couldn't fight. My best years, my prime years, my great years. Three and a half years, man. My great years, my good years, 26, 27, 20 and a half, nine years old, you know? But then, out of nowhere, the state of Georgia, 1970, gave me a license to come back and fight Jerry Quarry. Ugly Jerry Quarry. <laughs> Joe Fraser's the champion. I want Joe Fraser. The winner and still heavyweight champion, Joe Fraser. Today, vindication. Ali's conviction for draft division today was overturned by the United States Supreme Court by an eight to nothing vote. <laughs> October 1, 1975, Manila, the Philippines, Pearl of the South Pacific. Ali Frazier, the third time around. Frazier unable to answer the bell for the 15th round. The Thriller in Manila. You surprised me, Miss Brooks. at the age of 36, you know, I couldn't train like I want to train, you know, couldn't do the things in the ring I want to do, gave that ugly sucker the first seven rounds and tried to come back after him, you know, just gave away too much, you know, every time I reached back for that something to knock him out, just wasn't there, you know, hell, uh, he was so ugly, I think ain't no way he could beat me, <laughs> oh, Leah, they took away his driver's license. He walked into a telephone pole. <laughs> Everybody's saying to me now, they're saying, hey, champ, you must feel bad. You ain't champ more. You, you lost to some kid who looked like a train ran through his face. I say, hey, hey, man. Nothing to be sorry about. You see, everybody in life suffers a loss, you see. It's the one who can overcome the loss and make a success of himself that's really doing something. As I look back over my career, I would 
was heavyweight champion 14 years ago, man. Ain't that something? 14 years ago. I had a great life. Allah's been good to me. 59 professional fights, made a lot of money, got beautiful kids, great family, got everything to look forward to. But something's eating at me. I don't want to go out losing to no Leon Spinks with eight professional fights. I don't want to be remembered as being out of shape in that ring of Las Vegas. I want him one more time. And I'm going to do it. I'm 36 years of age. My body's tired. I don't like training very much. But starting tomorrow, I'm getting in shape for that rematch with Leon. Getting up early, I'm going to run with the moon. I'm going to start hitting that table and do my push-up, do my sit-ups. I'm going to take the punch and do whatever I have to do. And I'm going to run. And I want to be the first man ever to win the title for the third time. Nobody's ever done anything like that. But then again, nobody's ever done anything quite like me. And I'm predicting that I'm going to do it. Because I want to be the heavyweight champ for the third time. Because I can do it. And you can do it too. No matter what you was in life, no matter what color, no matter what religion, it's never too late to start all over again. Never forget that. And you'll never forget me. I am the greatest of all time! Billy Crystal, a super talent, a super moment. Williams, quarterback, CBS, his team tied with ABC at five points apiece. If they can score another five points, or anything for that matter, they will go against NBC in the tug of war to become the ultimate winner, if they can, of the Battle of the Network Stars. Williams with the ball, and he hits Judy Norton Taylor beautifully. Diana Canova playing too safely, too far off the wide receiver. Look at it again, Billy Crystal. Yeah, Judy looks like she's going long, and the pass is soft. Diana just can't get back in time to knock the ball down. Nice catch. So that does it. CBS will go against NBC in the tug of war to determine the winner of the Battle of the Network Stars. And for the up-to-the-minute official scoring, our friend, the computer, Tweaky. is out of it. Sorry, Mr. Van Patten. But Mr. Asner and Mr. Conrad will lead their teams in the final test. Good luck, gentlemen. Coming up, the final, the determining event, the tug of war. And Bob Conrad's team has never lost a tug of war in this competition. From the beginning, he's been an integral part of it. We thought at times to talk with Bob. Bob, in your own way, you're incredible. I don't know of a man who's been given more primetime shows. You keep coming back, coming back. You never really left. You've got a durability unparalleled in the industry. How in the world do you account for it? Well, good luck, Prayer and Fred Silverman. <laughs> and some talent, some talent, I hope. But I got news for you. I won't be coming back to the Ballet Network stars, and I'd like to say at this time, it's probably been in the last four years something that I know I will never forget. Uh, your comradeship. Every time I say nice things about you, they always edit it out. But getting to know you as a person has been uh, uh, wonderful for me. Getting to know all of the athletes uh, who are also actors over the last seven events has been something that, quite candidly, uh, I've been blessed with. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed knocking Joanna Pettit down and watching her get back up. I've enjoyed us being displayed as what we are, human beings. But I realize now that I'm not up to what I think is in the best interest of competition. So I take my leave. But I'll be watching, Howard, I promise you. And I'll be yelling back at you, Howard. I'll be calling you all kinds of names. Won't be the same without you. Let's NBC meet and, uh, Bob Conrad uh, through CBS. all of the battles of the network the stars. The team. We ran a damn good race. You're right, you did, but you would have finished second had been... Like no hell. Like hell. No no Happen get his team out there, run it with us. We'll, we're determine who the best team is. You, you, you're going for a little negotiation technicality. That's your captain. He lodged the protest. You and I want to run 100 to see who the fastest yes, is? Yes, yes. Let's go. All right. All right. Conrad against Kaplan to determine the ultimate winner of the running relay. They're off. Good start by Conrad. He got the lead, but Kaplan with the longest stride comes abreast at the turn. Moves out ahead. Kaplan opening space. Kaplan wins the runoff for the running relay. Best 
captain one. That's the way I like it. What a superb catch. Great. Just great. Looked like Boletnikov at his best, Robert. Yeah, but you know what you got to do, don't you? Got to play defense. I mean, how many times you catch it? They can catch it, too. Now we got to stop them, right? You understand? Whatever you say. I'm linebacker. We're going. Congratulations. NBC has won the tug of war. That's the quickest one we've ever had in the tug of war. That's my last one. And I, I, I just think things have been great. I'm 42, and I want these young guys to take this over and hire you one of the nicest men. I love Iron Man. I love you. We're kicking off. But I want to make sure, and I want it very abundantly clear to all of you guys, no hit, no play. Got it? Let's see a little contact out there. That's the name of the game. It's football. There's no fear. These kids aren't afraid of me. Uh, matter of fact, um, <laughs> I don't fool them at all. <laughs> they know I'm not a tough guy. <laughs> and if you don't like it, I dare you. Now, Ferrigno getting ready for the last throw. A hit, but not cleanly, so it's just one. What, what is he trying to do? Conrad trying to get out of the tank. No, Ferrigno got him. He finally got him. Not fairly, of course, but Lewis happy with what he accomplished. And Conrad, well, he'll have to take it with good grace despite the gritted teeth. There's nothing he's going to do to Ferrigno. Go we'll see how tough you are, Conrad. Simon says, step closer. Simon says, look me. Go for the shoulder, Lou. Knock it off. Simon says, knock it off. This is how you mad. Yeah. Say it louder. You're terrific, Shake. You're out. <laughs> You're the winner. You've been quoted as saying that you attribute at least some of your success to the fact that you've been not only dedicated, but dead honest. Sometimes abrasive, but that in the interest of honesty. Is that a reasonably accurate quote? I would hope so, Howard. I would hope I could be polygraphed. Uh, I am abrasive to some uh, people, overly ab abrasive um, and obnoxious, but I'm honest. And uh, uh, I don't know if that's an attribute or not, but it, it, it's what I deal with every day. I can look you in the eye or anybody else and say, I never kidded you. I told you the truth. And if I had to be judged at some time in my life, I would like to say at least Conrad was an honest man. And we have always found him exactly that. That's where you'll be seeing the ultimate, the determining event, the tug of war, coming up. So it has come down to this, the final event, the tug of war. The winning team, every person, $20,000. The losing team, every person, $15,000. $5,000 differential. Five people to a team. Three men, two women. Weight limitation, 800 pounds. And CBS had to strip to make the weight. Here's Billy Crystal. My friend. Sir. Three men, two women, 800 pounds. You've never lost a tug of war. Never in my life, and I hope it uh, doesn't end here. No, I don't think we're going to lose. Because we're ready for it. We're psyched up for it. We lost our big man, Gil, because mm -hmm. of weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, CBS had to strip down, take off their rosaries and everything else. But um, you think yeah. the women will play a big factor in the poll this time? Well, Billy, you and I both know that women are the deciding factor in these events. And uh, if uh, yeah, I think so. I think I think it's equal. I think we're all going to play a deci uh, decisive factor. This is my last event. I don't want to go in the pool. Any special strategy? Yeah, guts. <laughs> Well, I think that's about Go for it. You know, if you win, lose, or draw, it's going to be the best effort I can make. It always is. Thank you. Ed, Bob Conrad has never lost a tug of war. Will this be the first time? Really? Yeah, really. That's amazing. 
I wonder if aging will change that. <laughs> In other, but he was asked what his special strategy was for this event. Yeah, what he, did he say? Guts. What's yours? More guts. <laughs> Bobby Conrad, he never lets up, does he, Billy? No, he doesn't. He wants this one more than he's ever wanted any of them. Uh, he's just a tremendous competitor. You've been in three polls. Anything more debilitating in your life that you can remember? Just a tough Regents exam in geometry I did in 62. <laughs> but you got Greg Harrison leading off, Valerie Bertinelli, then Ed Asner. Harrison at 170, Bertinelli at 117, Asner, the ex-football player, at 215 pounds. Remember, they had a strip to make the weight. Judy Norton Taylor at 116. Forget about Howard Hessman. He won't be pulling. I think that's all to the good for CBS. Well, he'll be cheering, and that'll help, too. And you have Al Williams, who's going to be the anchorman. At 189 pounds, the anchorman, usually regarded by the uninitiated as the key, but is he as important, really, as the lead man, Billy? Well, I, I don't know. I think it's... Uh, the lead man is real important, but I think if you got a big man at the end, it takes a, it takes it's tougher to pull a big man a longer distance. And then you go to the NBC team, and they line up with Evigan at 182, and Sarah Purcell at 125, Give some rope. Give some rope. Pat Wien at 191, and then comes lovely Aaron Gray at 120, and then the anchor man, the gutty one. Bobby Conrad at 178. At this moment, they're all trying to get their leverage. And in the background, there will be the cheerleaders, not the pretty ones, but the members of the team trying to lend cadence. We're about ready. All right, there's the scene set. Commissioner George Brett in the middle. Remember, the object to pull the other team's flag to the point of the white ribbon to at least touch it, and that would produce the victory. There goes Commissioner Brett. The whistle, and they're off. The big bulk edge seems to be with NBC, but in the beginning, Greg Harrison is the lead man, has gotten a little edge, a little edge for CBS. Howard Hessman exhorting on the CBS team. Randy Oates, Gil Gerard exhorting on the NBC team. And NBC is in trouble. The key is the lead man, Greg Harrison. Look at those teeth clenched together. Valerie Bertinelli. Look at Ed Astor, the body prostrate. However, he advanced, he may be in years. That's the body of a former football player. CBS is getting close, close to the victory. They have gotten that flag into dangerous territory from the NBC point of view. Al Williams is the anchor man. Look at the clenched teeth of Judy Norton Taylor. And then look at the NBC team. Evigan drifting down the sand. Evigan trying to hold together. Pat Wayne up. And suddenly, the tide turns, and NBC has gotten new leverage. Pat Wayne got to his feet, normally a dangerous tack, but he got them new leverage. And look at Gil Gerard. Now CBS appears to be done in. A spectacular change in the flow of events. Shifting tides of fortune, and it's CBS that's now in peril. Back there are Aaron Gray and Sarah Purcell and the ever-present captain, the veteran Bob Conrad. But look at this. Evigan gets to his feet. Now they did it. Evigan got to his feet and did it. And he lies there in a state of absolute exhaustion. What a scene. The jubilation among the NBC group. The utter exhaustion written in the face of Ed Astin and Valerie Bertinelli. I'll tell you, Billy, it couldn't be much tougher. Let's talk to the winning captain, Bobby Conrad. Hey, Bob. Bob. Explain what you just said to Gil Gerard. Thank you for the cadence. Uh, principally, we put... We put Gil against the world's greatest athlete. What's his name? The other boy on the other side. <laughs> Harris. Uh, yeah, uh, Evagon. And he just powered through, and we put Pat behind that. And then we had a cadence. 
and we got the cadence was set by Gil, but we also got it from Melissa. We also got it from Randy. The, the, the thing is, you must have a cadence. You must have energy in a team. And it was pull, pull, pull. And they had more pull. weight, even when they took all their little stuff off, the mezuzahs and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in the meantime, let me tell you this. The girls were critical. Tremendous effort oh, yeah. from Sarah and Aaron. I know. You know why? Because Aaron and I were back there on several occasions. We got married to each other. I said, excuse me, but Paul! <laughs> no, that's great. I love it. It's a great way to... Uh, I want to thank this great team and all the other teams and certainly the American public. And uh, whatever you buy, we're giving you. If you think it's easy, do it at the next picnic. All right, anything to say, Billy, to the great veteran as he leaves as a friend and a competitor? I love you. You know I'm not that macho. Only you know for sure. Let me, I have to ask you a close health question. Yes. Are you going to retire? Or are you going to pull an Ali and come back? Only if I grow. <laughs> I think we're both in a lot of time. I think so. All right, let's talk to the losing captain. Let's go over to Ed Asner, who gave it all he had. You see them embracing one another. Ed, oh, believe me. Ed for Dragon uh, Allen. In the early going, in the shifting tides of fortune, it looked like you had them. You had them in trouble. Suddenly the tide turned. Yeah. Tough, wasn't it? I never saw a thing. <laughs> Don't ask me. You of remember course, anything? Uh, no. I just couldn't get my feet to working. Uh, so that if we ever had slack, I couldn't let my feet take over so I could use my hands to funnel it back, uh, to funnel back the slack. I don't even know if there was slack, mm -hmm. but uh, that would have helped the anchor man and it would have helped Greg. Well, I'll tell you, it was a tremendous effort by your team all the way. It's I hope you team. enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I love my team. I'll go with them anyway. I'll go to hell for them. And they all but did CBS in losing to NBC. It's been the seventh time around, and a lot of great people having a lot of fun for your entertainment. Nothing more nor less than that. Not pretending to be the Olympics, not pretending to be the Super Bowl, or anything like that. For me, I love it every time I do it, and especially this one, because I had with me one of the finest young talents in this land, Billy Crystal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Howard. I loved it.